With this channel, I focus especially on autistic-related politics and advocate for autistic people. So, I reject the autism awareness movement, and acceptance is too moderate for me. And I most certainly reject pretty much everything said by Autism Speaks and ABA, aside from fire is hot. But I will also critique the neurodiversity movement for accepting too many ideas from the diagnosis of ASD or Autism Spectrum Disorder and its implications. In fact, I reject all value assigned to autism itself, or at least the current conceptualization of autistic people. So why? Why do I believe this? Why do I have to be so strange? But moreover, I want to suggest why you should be a little strange. I do believe that we should spread awareness and prevent autistic oppression. ABA, the current education system, unemployment, underemployment, social isolation, low birth rates and eugenics are just some of the problems that face autistic people. Any talks of a supposed autism epidemic or need for so-called treatment are merely myths designed to distract from the real problems facing autistic people. In fact, I am absolutely disgusted by autism culture for trying to erase autistic people, in a similar way one might be disgusted by burning books or littering. It is degenerate. It's not that you should respect them, but rather they should respect you. We're pointing out real problems, which most of society doesn't even know exists. In fact, they may as well have embraced it as most people either see us as either mentally handicapped or as a plague that needs to go extinct. The society where 4% of people have AUD, 33% of people have obesity, and 21% of CEOs are literal psychopaths should not decide the fate of millions of people and their descendants who did nothing wrong. So, I do think that ABA and almost every institution with autism in the name should be dismantled. But you shouldn't hate without at least remembering what you love. Hate is better than indifference, as it implies that there was at least something you loved. Not only is eugenics against autistic people immoral, but it would destroy something beautiful before you could even see it. This may be my bias as an autistic person myself, but I think that we are the most oppressed minority next to Native Americans. Autistic people are treated like animals, are dying out as a population, and most of all, not to be hopeless, but it's rather disturbing that nobody can even imagine something better. Most people stop at replacing ABA with special education. The main reason why autistic people caught my interest is mostly because of double empathy and its implications. You see, when we think of autistic people, we think of someone who is unsocial, or at least less social than neurotypicals. This is what I could have thought, but I remember seeing a video back in 2018 or 2019. Autistic people are often seen as naturally disabled. But as I learned about the autistic psychology and double empathy, I realized that being autistic has as much pros as it does cons. Autistic people are, generally speaking, more motivated by intrinsic goals rather than something like money or fame, more likely to act on morality and conscience, and according to double empathy, have their own way of communicating. The virtues we don't know, however, are not as important as what we aren't sure of, Double empathy, if you haven't heard, means that autistic people communicate just as well as neurotypicals, but only between each others. As with neurotypicals, it's kinda like speaking French when everyone else speaks English, and you have no choice but to speak French or to speak in French grammar. It's not that we lack communication or social skills, we just have nobody who speaks our language, if you will. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, language and culture itself is only tailored to neurotypical thought. Keep that in mind as I point out the three reasons why double empathy is especially important. Firstly, autistic people can't not be social. People used to assume that autistic people didn't want to socialize because they were just asocial. And sadly, this misconception has been perpetuated by the media. 
If anything, the opposite is true. This is not to say that autistic people are naturally more collectivist, but perhaps autistic people are more social in the sense of relating to one another, rather than in the sense of conforming to a group or respecting authority. The reason autistic people seem asocial is because of the double empathy phenomenon and its consequences, an unnecessary emphasis on obedience, and ABA and similar programs which limit its communication, especially emotional communication. I'm pointing this out because maybe the problem is that we can't make friends, but that it's hard to make friends when 98% of people socialize in a way that only makes sense to their psychology, as opposed to our psychology. To explain why I say this is complex, and it will take a lot of videos to fully explain, but I'll go over it quick. Autistic people seem to be more altruistic and detached from itself, to the point where we tend to be self-destructive under a society which is less communal. And so far, we aren't faring too well separated from each other. Having executive dysfunction, higher rates of depression, anxiety, PTSD, and suicide. Speaking of difficulty, how did the people who had to deal with double empathy even begin to exist? Autistic communication works contrary to how neurotypicals communicate, with very little advantage. In fact, almost no advantage at all. Examples include how autistic people handled eye contact, info dumping, and very specific conceptualization. While some of these are caused by the same thing necessary for technological advancements and the engineering done by autistic people, the autistic psychology as a whole could have never evolved under a neurotypical society. Lack of communication would have been so hard to deal with that it would have been almost objectively better to be neurotypical or a neurotypical that happened to have a very high IQ. In most of history, innovation wasn't so important that people would lose the ability to reproduce more children for it. Thus, there must have been an autistic society to support such a path in evolution. Under the autistic Neanderthal theory, this is the society of the Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. Regardless of whether or not it specifically is true, we can be very certain that an autistic society did exist, as it would allow for a different style of communication to form over time, separate from neurotypicals. Elements of such a lost civilization would re-emerge if an autistic society were created again, due to both sharing the virtue of catering to autistic psychology. The last two points are strengthened by the fact that autistic psychology itself is augmented in neurotypical society. The autistic mind was meant for a different language, culture, climate, as opposed to everyone else. Our understanding of psychology is not 100% scientific, because you rarely have one independent variable, but rather a literal lifetime of factors. A dozen motives can be behind one decision, and that motive exists due to a dozen factors. Considering the fact that it is hard for autistic people to communicate in neurotypical society, there's most likely something lost in development due to such difficulties. This means that, for all we know, the autistic people we see today have been stunted in childhood development, while true autistic psychology is unknown until we put autistic people in an autistic society. This is probably my most important point. I like to preach the values of being autistic, but it's just as important as the fact that we already know that we don't truly understand autistic psychology, even less autistic society. The mere plausibility of something spectacular outweighs the risk of being slightly less efficient economically. I do admit that autistic children do have communication difficulties. Firstly, however, it is unwise to judge autistic people as children, since no animal acts the same when it is a child as when it is an adult. Moreover, this is due to both autistic people and neurotypicals lacking communication and social skills. Autistic children communicate, but the neurotypical parents, through no fault of their own, can't understand the children. 
Because children don't communicate neurotypically doesn't mean that they aren't trying to communicate at all. This is intensified by ABA and special education, which causes the child to communicate even less, especially in terms of emotional communication. It also reduces emotional well-being and creates learned helplessness in general. A family may not need autistic society itself, but autistic society will lead to a better understanding of autistic communication and psychology, which in turn helps people communicate between autistic people and neurotypicals. Autistic society may be mediocre or the best thing ever, but we won't know until we start building it. At the very least, it's more ethical than eugenics or ABA. The three points which I have listed are also why I'm against autism culture. Not to be confused with autistic culture, the culture of autistic people. Autism culture and the autism community are groups that share the beliefs surrounding the ideas implied by the concept of autism spectrum disorder and the common ideas surrounding it. As I've said in another video, autism is merely a representation attempting to describe and define autistic psychology. Autism, by its definition and use, pathologizes autistic psychology and thus pathologizes autistic people. Autism culture is, in fact, designed to destroy autistic culture and society because it characterizes autisticness as either bad or only good for something petty or inhuman, like having specialized set of skills or having good memory or anything only a CEO or boss would care about. Even if autism culture embraces autisticness, it will corrupt the self-image of autistic people because it is inherently anti-autistic. To give a specific example, autism states that autistic people are less social than neurotypicals. While autistic people have a hard time communicating with neurotypicals and relating to them, we are no less social. In fact, being asocial hurts autistic people. This is actually the most dangerous part because corporate entities can literally dehumanize autistic people so that you can't make friends, but then make it okay because at least you have your special interest. It is degenerative in a similar way Nazism and the postmodern left is. They threaten to destroy autistic civilization before it can even exist, but it doesn't have any plan to replacement. In a similar fashion, the postmodernists destroyed the West for the sake of destroying the West, and the Nazis were more focused on killing minorities than actually helping the German people. Such ideologies range from unjust to evil either way, but they can at least create something after the destruction. I don't see autism culture helping out neurotypicals, or anyone besides rich people who perpetuate it. Moreover, neurotypical cultures and upcoming autistic cultures have more in common with each other since they are actually their own civilization rather than being defined by destroying other cultures. As a matter of fact, I bring this up because we should ideally form our own culture, period. However, that's quixotic right now. It's more pragmatic to take whatever autistic culture we have now, remove all the influence from psychopathic culture and autism culture, and fill the rest with elements of eclectically chosen tenets of culture in general. While neurotypical culture is generally indifferent to autistic people, autism culture is actively against autistic people. That's basically everything I have to say. To be a little hyperbolic, Everything else I say about autistic people is just me elaborating on this.